Every year around Halloween, we are treated to an outpouring of what could only be described as scare literature, telling us about how the holiday is satanic and evil and should not be celebrated by Christians. These opinions are backed up by some rather unusual and very frightening fantasies masquerading as historical facts. The following videos are not intended to address whether or not Satan exists, nor to show that witches are nice granola eating vegetarians and tree hookers who would harm a fly, nor is it a tackle of fundamentalist Christians, but rather a discussion concerning some of the so-called facts offered in some anti-Halloween publications. When most people think of Halloween, they think of trick-or-treating, parades, bobbing for apples, and other family-friendly activities. But bet you didn't know the true story behind the ancient origins of Halloween. It all goes back some 2,000 years to the ancient Celtic festival known as Samhain, celebrated on November 1st. It is certainly not true that historians universally agree that Samhain is the primary origin of Halloween, and the contention that Samhain has a 2,000-year history seems to stem from a misreading of the History Channel page, which says, It all goes back some 2,000 years to the ancient Celtic festival known as Samhain, celebrated on November 1st. Ronald Hutton, a historian who, unlike the History Channel, cites both primary and scholarly secondary sources, explains that the idea that Samhain marked the Celtic New Year came from 19th-century Oxford philologist Sir John Riz. But Sir John Riz's evidence for this was flimsy. There are other problems with some of the claims made about Samhain. First, how old is Samhain? The video says it's 2,000 years old. Wonkets. Dr. Zoom uses sarcasm to indicate it is very ancient, older than All Saints Day and Christianity itself. Old Church Calendars. And All Saints Day has been celebrated on November 1 from the earliest days of Christianity going back all the way to um, the 8th century. And there is absolutely no connection between that holiday and the Celtic festival of Samhain, which predates Christianity, but probably not really because historians always lie about Jesus, to make him look bad. The earliest references to Samhain come from the 10th century Tokmark Amir, 200 years after the date Zuma attributes to the commemoration of All Saints Day on November 1st. Of course Samhain is older than that, probably much older, but we don't know how old, and our information comes from comparatively late sources. The Christian Church turned Samhain into All Saints Day, or All Hallows, in the 8th century. The night before became All Hallows Eve, later shortened to Halloween. The idea that November 1st was chosen for All Saints Day, because it coincided with Samhain is also problematic. As Jeezy Bulls Kelly Faircloth says, you think they plunked All Saints Day down right next to Samhain, because Jesus died for your pumpkin spice lats? Whatever. All Saints Day was celebrated on different days in different parts of the Western Christian world. By the mid-4th century, Christians had begun honoring all martyrs on a special day. In the Mediterranean, the celebration was in May. Festivals commemorating the saints as opposed to the original Christian martyrs appear to have been observed by 800. In England and Germany, this celebration took place on 1st November. In Ireland, it was commemorated on 20th April, a chronology that contradicts the widely held view that the November date was chosen to Christianize the festival of Samhain. On the night before Samhain, people believed that the dead returned as ghosts. They would leave food and wine on their doorsteps to keep roaming spirits at bay and wear masks when they left the house so they would be mistaken for fellow ghosts. How was Samhain celebrated? The question may be unanswerable, since our sources are relatively late and provide limited information, but many of the claims made about Samhain are not supported by the earliest texts. According to medieval Irish works, Samhain was a festival that marked the transition from summer to winter and it was a time of feasting and social gatherings. Many literary adventures began on Samhain, though this may be simply because it was a time when people were gathered together. Some scholars have argued that Samhain had a particular connection to the supernatural, because many stories set during Samhain involve a character encountering or being attacked by supernatural beings. 
While Hutton admits that this interpretation may be correct, the point cannot be proved from the tales themselves, it could just be that several narratives are started, set, or concluded at this feast, because it represented an ideal context, being a major gathering of royalty and warriors with time on their hands. He compares the Sowen stories to Arthurian tales, that often begin at a feast celebrating Christmas or Pentecost and which often involve supernatural elements, such as Sir Grin and their Green Knight. You've heard of trick-or-treating on Halloween, but what about souling or guising? All three of these traditions originated in medieval Britain. On All Souls Day, November 2nd, the needy would beg for pastries known as soul cakes. In return, they would pray for people's dead relatives. This was called souling. In the medieval Halloween tradition of guising, young people would dress up in costume and accept food, wine, money, and other offerings in exchange for singing, reciting poetry, or telling jokes. The earliest known use of the phrase trick or treat is found in a 1927 newspaper. Not the medieval period. Here is the 1927 phrase. Halloween provided an opportunity for real strenuous fun. No real damage was done except to the temper of some who had to hunt for wagon wheels, gates, wagons, barrels, etc., much of which decorated the front street. The youthful tormentors were at back door and front demanding edible plunder by the word trick or treat, to which the inmates gladly responded and sent the robbers away rejoicing. So ruling. The first published book on the history of Halloween, in 1919, connected the idea of souling to the current displays of Halloween. The taste in Halloween festivities now is to study old traditions and hold a scotch party, using Burns' poem Halloween as a guide, or to go a souling as the English used. Connecting souling goes all the way back to 19, 19. Not the medieval period. Guising. It is noteworthy that the historical use of guising predates the historical use of trick-or-treat by 16 years, as the first mention of children guising is from a Canadian newspaper in 1911. Whereas the first recorded use of trick-or-treat is from 1927. Again this too is not dated back to the medieval period. Custom took on its current family-friendly, kid-centered form. Today, Halloween is big business, with U.S. consumers spending more than $2.5 billion on costumes annually. Add in the candy, and it's estimated that Americans spend up to $6 billion on Halloween each year, making it the second most commercial holiday after Christmas. This is tiny compared to the $600 billion Americans are projected to spend this holiday season. Annually, Halloween does not even make the top five when it comes to holiday spending. Mother's Day and Valentine's Day both command double the dollar amount of spent on Halloween. According to the NRF, even the Super Bowl tops Halloween in terms of consumer spending. So whether you're a fan of tricks, treats, or trivia, there's a bit of Halloween history. We bet you didn't know!